Data visualization is a big part of motion design, and Cavalry makes it super easy to set up dynamic rigs to make client revisions a breeze. Thanks for joining me. Let's get visualized. There are two ways to get started with data in Cavalry. The first method is to just import a regular CSV into the asset panel by dragging it in. You can then just drag the CSV file into the scene and it will automatically create a spreadsheet object. This will let you access the data in the sheet. And this is fine if you have limited data and aren't expecting many revisions to the numbers. However, we know that clients love revisions. And when working in Cavalry, it's better to make dynamic systems whenever possible. So for the rest of this video, we'll be connecting to a Google Sheet for our data. But don't worry, everything else will work the same if you are just using a normal CSV file. To import a Google Sheet, you'll need to navigate to that sheet and make sure that sharing is on and anyone with the link is checked. Then just copy the URL. Back in Cavalry, right click on the Assets panel and just click on Import Google Sheet and then paste the URL. For some reason, Google is now adding the word edit into the URLs and currently this confuses Cavalry. So make sure to remove the word edit from the URL. Click OK and now you have a linked Google Sheet to work with. If you want to import multiple tabs of data from the same sheet, just navigate to that tab and copy that URL. It'll have a different GID number at the end, which references which tab is currently open. I've already touched on bar charts a little bit in my duplicator sequence video, but a few things have changed since then that make dynamic rigging better. Still a good video to watch to learn about systems and cavalry though. So to get started, let's make a rectangle, add an align deformer with the Y value set to one, style the rest however you want, Create a text layer for the bar titles, uncheck auto on the text box size attribute, center both aligns, check shrink to fit text box, and then set the font size to something humongous. Then we can just adjust the values in the text box size attribute to fit your needs. I'll be using 225. Doing it this way means that if the client changes things in the Google Sheet, it will always have the correct spacing regardless of the length of the text, within reason. I also personally don't like word breaks, so I uncheck that as well. When we use a set text box size, the pivot point changes to someplace crazy. So go ahead and put an align deformer on there with the Y value set to negative one. And then we can adjust the Y position as needed. Now group those two layers together and pull in two copies of your Google Sheet data. One for the data and one for the names. Make sure to rename them so that you don't get confused later on. Make sure the correct columns are selected inside of each spreadsheet utility. Connect the output of the name sheet into the text layer string attribute and the output of the data sheet into the rectangle's height attribute. Spreadsheet utilities include a handy feature where you can remap the data for sizing purposes. Click on remapping and select number range. In the new attributes, keep source minimum at zero. Source maximum will be whatever your highest data point is. It's a good idea to bake this into the Google Sheet so that if the client makes changes later on, it'll auto update. You can do this by using the max function. The minimum can stay at zero and the maximum will be however tall you want it to be in your composition. In my case, 500 will be good. If you find this information helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And comment down below what topics you want me to cover next. Now with this folder selected, alt click on the duplicator button and set the distribution to linear. Connect the row count attribute from the coffee data spreadsheet utility to the count attribute of the duplicator. Set the size mode to step and adjust the size so that things look nice. Seeing all of these titles on the screen shows that something looks a little bit weird. We can go back to our text shape and adjust the settings to make things look nice again. I'm going to increase the minimum text box height to 117, and that starts to make things look a little bit better. I'm also going to move the whole duplicator down just a bit. Setting it up this way allows the client to add or remove entries from the Google Sheet without you needing to manually update things. All you need to do is right click, reload the sheet, and boom! Your composition updates all on its own. Now you can see all your bars, but let's get it animated. To animate the bars, we need to add a value blend in between our data and our rectangle's height. Inside that folder, hit Control or Command and period to open up the quick add menu and search for value blend. Connect the output of the sheet data into the second value and leave the first value at zero. Then connect the output of the value blend to the height of the rectangle. Now let's animate the strength over about 12 frames. Make sure to add some easing to that. In the duplicator, add a stagger to the shape time offset with a value of negative eight. I'm choosing eight frames so there will be some overlap and making it negative so that the offset is after frame zero. If your shapes are animating in the reverse order, then just make sure to flip that graph. And if that seems like a lot to do, you can also just get my plugin that makes this process as easy as one, two, three, four. And since this is all dynamically connected, any changes your client makes to the data should update themselves when you reload the sheet. A bit of extra setup saves so much time later on. Make sure to like and subscribe and next time we get complex.